Doom was uh, sort of the, the franchise that we had left behind for Quake at that point in time. So there was a little bit of momentum that was lost sort of from Hollywood's perspective on what was the sort of relevant title it is. And uh, of course as we came back uh, and started working on Doom 3 back in 2000, uh, and had such a great show at E3 in 2002, I think that, uh, you know, it started the momentum up again. Uh, and, um, you know, it also sort of took uh, putting all the right parts together uh, really to, to, bring the movie to, the, uh, to bring the movie to the big screen. Um, when we started uh, back, uh, back even before I was at ID, uh, you know, we never really had the right team in place. And I think that uh, working with CAA from the agency side and John and Lorenzo from the production company and, and those guys going out and getting a writer who I think was a big fan of the game and the genre in general, to, uh, to write a script that would do the game justice uh, was a process that just took, took some time. Well, the, you know, there's, there's a big difference in the medium because uh, from interactive to passive, uh, you do have to change some things to sort of keep the, the feeling and the excitement uh, similar between the two. And uh, when we started going through the process, for example, of looking at the scripts, we weren't looking at something necessarily to be exactly the type of story that we had, especially in the original Dooms, because you know it was basically just sort of an outline written at the start of a manual to give you uh, a reason to be there and a reason to do what you're doing as you're as you're blasting demons away to sort of you know know that you're the good guy and these are all coming from hell and sort of give you a bit of a setting. Um, but we wanted the uh, you know the movie to have something that was new that would be interesting, exciting to fans. That maybe we had a bit of uh, the unexpected uh, in there as well, but still be something that was true to what the feel of playing the video game is. And uh, I think in working with uh, with the team that we have is is that uh, that we're going to be able to achieve that. The trailer we just or the teaser actually teaser. just got just got in the office. I guess it was on uh, Thursday or Wednesday of this week. So. A lot of the guys at the office hadn't really seen any of the visuals from what people were working on with the movie at all. So this was a case of true first impression, um, and, and, and most of the team hadn't even had an opportunity really to read the script. So they didn't know what to expect, and uh, as we sort of uh, huddled around the plasma monitor in one of the conference rooms with everybody in the company there, uh, as uh, you know, you almost sort of feel the, 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 the electricity build in the air, and then uh, at the end of the teaser, which uh, I guess is about 90 seconds long, something like that, there was, there was simultaneous applause. So, uh, you know, it felt good for me, and I think all the guys were pumped about uh, seeing the movie actually come out in October. Thank you guys for uh, lining up and, uh, and, and, and coming to, to support us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So Carl, um, could you tell us a little bit about your personal history with the game? Why, why you found the project attractive? Uh, well, I was a, f a fan of the game. I uh, played it uh, quite a few times with some friends of mine back in New Zealand. And then quite ironically enough, when I was making Chronicles of Riddick with with Vin, uh, we would, he had this, this place with this massive 10 foot uh, rip, uh, projector screen and we, and we would play the game and uh, when my agent called me up and said, uh, they're building this UAC facility in Prague and they want you to be the guy, it was like, <laughs> uh, it was a no brainer for me. So I, I was very, 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 very interested to be a part of it and, uh, and when I read the script and saw that it was a very, very, solid script with fantastic characters, three-dimensional characters, all with great arcs and journeys, and most importantly for me to see that the, the script was a, a, faithful, a faithful rendition of, of the game. Uh, it's unapologetic, it's dark as hell, it's gory, and it's, it's um, I think, a, a really faithful rendition of Game. Had a lot of fun making this. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the uh, they went to a lot of trouble to accurately recreate the the sets from the game, and they built these corridors and labs, and uh, you know, e even the graphics on the computer screens were exactly the same as as, as the game, and. Uh, you know, I, we just had a lot of fun rampaging through this, this set, and uh, it was a scary dark set for, for four months. Um, we were really privileged. We, we got to train with a, uh, a guy called Tom McAdams, who was a uh, ex-SAS uh, uh, 
a soldier who'd been in the regiment for 25 years and it was his job to teach us how to uh, play the game for real. And uh, you know, we, you know, he taught us to uh, taught us about weapons, taught us about how to communicate without, uh, you know, with hand signals and uh, weapon safety and, and firing maneuvers, and, and uh, uh, it was a, a real a real opener. And he told us a lot of tales about, um, you know, his experience to, to try and give us some sort of depth of knowledge. Of course, all the tales are highly unrepeatable, uh, but uh, you know. I think we were fortunate in the in the fact that the uh, producers assembled a really top-notch cast in this film. A really fantastic bunch of guys, and, and we really kind of bonded and formed a, a strong team. I read the script, and once I signed on to do it, everybody had assumed at that point that I was playing uh, the character of John. When I first read the script for John, I read it, and um, after I read it, I thought, wow, you know, John's a great character, of course, is the hero of the movie. But for some reason, I was drawn more to Sarge. I thought Sarge, to me, uh, was more interesting, had a lot of uh, darker side, and um, with a great twist at the end. And not only that, but you know, when you're forced in a position where you're the commanding officer of clearly an elite group of Marines, and how you deal with the problems you're facing, and staying within the within the confines of the story of trying to um, of trying to take care of the problem on Mars, basically and dealing with all these monsters and my guys are dying and how I'm dealing with that. And not only that, but that when I realized that I could actually shoot the BFG, <laughs> now, <laughs> no, the BFG means, can I say it? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Bio-force gun. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, and I should make this very, very clear because it was really, really important. I think it's important to all the, uh, the Doom fans and the game fans and video game fans because as a gamer myself for years and years and years and years, it was important um, that the monsters were not CGI monsters. And I'm happy and very, very proud to say that we went to, absolutely, we went to uh, Stan Winston Studios who created, sure, as you guys know, I don't have to sell Stan Winston Studios to you guys. Um, uh, you know, they, they created these monsters and, and um, you know, with a couple of video game movies in the past when they were made into movies, without naming names, I wasn't too crazy about the CGI monsters because there's no, uh, there's no weight to them. And you know, they, they look kind of just fluffy and light, regardless of how scary they may look. So these monsters here, the Baron, um, all, all the other monsters, everything we have, made from the real deal guys. And they had these guys who would put on these, uh, these outfits for hours and hours and hours, and they look incredible. Six, like seven, eight feet, I think one might be hitting nine, just unbelievable, unbelievable and just awesome. Uh, um, gravity and weight, and they really, really kick a lot of ass in the movie, I promise you. Do I play the Doom game? Yeah. Well, I played the first one, yeah, and it's so funny. The first one came out, I think, in 90, 93. Thank you. Um, I remember playing it, and then, <laughs> I'll share this with you. I played it for a little while, and I was like, damn, I think I feel sick. What's going on? You know, and I didn't know at that time, like, I, I wasn't used to, the, obviously, the first-person shooter, because you guys had, had, you know, were the trailblazer that you created that. So um, I played that, uh, of course, Doom 2 and, and Doom 3. They sent me Doom 3. I loved it. I played it before I, I went out. That's um, yeah, great. It's great. And you guys are really, really going to be uh, really, really happy and, and um, very satisfied when you see the movie. And especially, I can say that now after seeing the game, after playing the game, too. Just kind of speaking to that, and this is to everybody, um, how close to the spirit of the game do you think the finished product actually came? Well, there's 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 parts that are that are straight out of the game itself. I mean, as Carl was saying, is is that when when I went over to visit the set in Prague uh, with the lead designer of the game, Tim Willits, we were the first thing that we noticed. We were just literally taken aback because you know we were working with this game for it took us four years, as everybody knows, to to, to complete Doom Three. So we were working with it for a while. And to sort of step out of the game universe and sort of virtual space and actually onto the set to where everything, I mean, even down to like the, the, the signs beside the doors and as Carl said, the, the graphics on the computer monitors that are in the movie are right down detailed within the game and uh, 
you know, the, the, uh, the artist it is who spent all the time working on creating the Imp characters and the, the Baron of the Hell Knight characters and even uh, the, the Pinky Demon characters and, and other, other, other of the demons from the game, to see those guys brought to real life, I mean, uh, it, I think I probably could have even acted scared in front of the Baron because uh, we actually got, an, it, got to go visit him in person out of the suit and in the suit. And the guy is, what is he, Brian is 6'8"? Brian's tall, yeah. Yeah, and, and he's on lifts too, so, I mean, it's, to, uh, when, you, when you play the game and you go see the movie, you'll see direct connections between the two. And, and I think that from an overall feel standpoint, the, the, the intensity, the atmosphere, and really the sort of the terror aspect of the game are really what you guys focused on and I thought executed so well uh, in the film. I think that's a good point that uh, that Tata just said. He said a word which is interesting, and it's very, very true about the intensity. The intensity of the game certainly carries over into the movie. Um, and you guys will see. First three, four minutes, we set it up, and about minute five, we're gone. And we go, and the intensity's there, and then you're on this non-stop train ride to hell. <laughs> I think one of the cool things about uh, the, the movie, which a lot of gamers will appreciate, is that uh, in the movie version, you can use your torch and your weapon at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. <laughs> well, we worked hard to make sure it would fit into it. One of the things we did that was, I think, uh, smart from the beginning, Lorenzo knew a young writer um, who hadn't done a lot of things before, Mr. Callahan, and and he came in, he was a gamer, and he was very, very protective of the game itself. So a lot of the conversations that we had is what could we do to, to augment what we were doing, um, to get it to length and to have a story to follow, but at the same time uh, be completely true to what was in the game. Uh, and, and that was a lot of conversations, I would say, that we did about, I don't know, 30 drafts or something before we got it done. <laughs> so the first, my first question was, um, is it going to be rated PG-13 or rated R? And when the word got back, it's definitely rated R. Spoke with, um, uh, spoke with the, ex I spoke with Scott Stuber as executive at that time, Universal, and I said this movie should be everything that the game is, which is unapologetic and groundbreaking. And he said it will be. And, um, and of course, working with these producers has been fantastic. The writing was good. And again, when I read it, I fell in love with Sarge, the character of Sarge, and everything that he had to go through. Um, and it was just a, a great, great script. And, and uh, I'm really, really, I, I saw the movie last week. Um, and just happy to tell you that uh, it's a great movie. And it really kicks ass. <laughs> Um, but I think a lot of the films haven't been particularly true to the origins of the game. Uh, there are a lot of great games out there that I think people would be interested in seeing, and uh, I'm hoping we set the bar a little high, and that people uh, who, who want to try it coming after us uh, are, are truer to the, to the spirit of the original game and the way in which it was created. And I think it's one of the reasons why uh, it stuck by us for so long, because I think that you guys saw that we were really serious about doing that, and not uh, watering down what was great about the game in the first place. So uh, there's some great games out there. A lot of people talking about doing Halo, and you know we'll just have to see what happens. This will be the last question. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Um, this is to uh, the entire, all the guys up there. I was wondering uh, what direction you're taking Doom with. If it's going to be serious and dramatic, or if it's just going to be a, a really good shoot 'em up action movie. It's really a love story. <laughs> Between you and the rock. That's, that's where Be Cool comes in. Yeah. Now Carl knows why they call me the rock. <laughs>